How you doing, guys? Good morning. Finally into a, a, a regular week with our football schedule with classes beginning tomorrow. You know, we had our first Sunday night practice, and um, you know, the players are off today, and we'll get right at it with Howard on tomorrow. You know, be a be a good challenge for our football team. You know, they're they're coming off a, a great win. You know, with a freshman quarterback number twelve coming in the game late, going ten of eleven, leading a drive down the field to win the game in RFK Stadium. So I'm sure they're a very excited program, and and we're certainly excited to open up our open up our season at High Point Solutions Stadium. You know, this weekend and get an opportunity to play a game in front of our home fans. You know, the only home game we have this September. You know, as the schedule worked out. So with that, I will uh, open it up for questions. Can you just break down what you see from Howard offense, defense? Sure. I, I think, you know, Coach Harrell has a background of playing in the NFL. He played in the World League. Uh, you know, they, they do a lot of things on offense. They're, they're, they're very multiple on offense. You know, they, they do some pro style sets, personnel, run game. And then they also have a spread element to their offense as well, where, you know, they'll put three wide receivers in the game. And one of their wide receivers is a little bit of a hybrid um, Type of guy. He's off the ball. He's on the ball, and so they challenge you in a number number of ways. You know, they're going to make you. They're going to make you defend a lot of different schemes. On on offense, I'm sorry. On defense, they're like a four-two-five configuration on defense, and uh, they want to. They without getting too specific, you know, they they want to they want to pressure you. You know, they they want to bring pressure. You know, they want to attack you on defense. Kyle, do you think the, the fact that this is your first home game, the team's first home game too, will offset any temptation to look ahead to South Florida since that's a league opener? And I, I hope the excitement of being in our home stadium for sure. You know, I, I, I think when you, when you look around the country, it's not, <clears throat> it's not hard to find motivation for every football game when you see what happened you know, out, out in Western PA. You know, with, with Pitt and Youngstown State, what happened a couple of years ago with Michigan and App State. You know, they're exa- and certainly what happened in our past. You know, we have games like that in our in our history. It was a little prior to when I got here, but but they're there and they're on the record. So I think every week when you show up at the stadium, there's going to be an opposing group of 18 to 22 year olds that are coached well, that have trained hard, and, and that are competitive. And you have to be ready to play every week, regardless of your opponent. But there still is a natural temptation among 18 and 22 year olds. <laughs> Right, though, is that one of the biggest things you're fighting this week? I don't, I don't think we're fighting that. I think we have a mature team. I think when you have an immature football team, you might be fighting that. I think we've got a mature football team that, that understands, you know, we've got an opportunity this week to go from 1-0 to 2-0 and to, and to keep all of our goals for this season alive by doing it. I think that'll be motivation enough. Uh, Coach, what did uh, what did Saturday's game show you about your team that you may not have seen, been able to see, say, in practice? You know, what you get to see in the game that you haven't seen in practice are, are the players who hadn't played in games yet. You know, we had some some young guys who played for the first time, Leonte Carew, Kyle Federico, and, uh, and Darius Hamilton. And we had some guys, you know, a year older who hadn't played in games yet, Quentin Goss, Anthony DePaula, Tyler Croft. And they got an opportunity to show us that the stage wouldn't be too big for them. And I think every one of them really did a nice job. And, and you know, Kyle missed his first kick, but then he came back and he made his next one and he made all the PATs and, and really, I think, grew in confidence as the game went on. And, and it didn't surprise me because he's been that way since he's been here in January. You know, he's got a great demeanor about him, and I think he'll only get better as we go forward. From an injury standpoint, there are other hopes. From an injury standpoint, uh, Paul and Marvin going to be getting back to work tomorrow or later? You know, Marvin, you know, we x-rayed Marvin and his x-rays were negative, so we feel good about that. You know, right now he's still got a boot on, so I don't know if uh, if he's going to be practicing with us tomorrow, but we're optimistic. You know, Paul is going to be an interesting, an interesting case. You know, he's got an ankle issue right now that he's dealing with. And when I saw him this morning down in the weight room, he was walking around in sneakers without a limp. So he looks great. Now, does that mean he can run and play football? Well, you know, we'll find that out tomorrow. He'll have another day to get ready for that, and then we'll, we'll have him out there and see what he can do and hopefully progress him as the week goes. But I, was, I felt really good about what he looked like just walking around the building this morning. Talk about this being almost a normal week because how quickly does it dissolve into abnormal 
since you turn around quickly on what on Sunday? Uh, no doubt. And right now our focus is on Howard, but but we are conscious of the big picture, and we know we do have a quick turnaround. And you know, we're going to play that game at 3:30 on Saturday afternoon, and we're going to turn around and we'll be practicing on Sunday, and we're going to set those schedules up today because we do have the short week on the back end afterwards. Well, with the cow, could you talk about that uh, that the kick out? Uh, could, could you talk about the, the kick out block by by uh, Civil on on that run by uh, by Jameis and a touchdown? Yeah, you know, it was a power play. You know, down blocks and double teams on the front side. Andre was the puller. You know, and really you have the fullback and the puller on that side to hopefully separate the defense. As you've heard me say, all runs that work separate the defense somehow, some way, and and that one did. And it was it was a great job by Andre because as he turned the corner, there were two defenders. And any time you turn the corner and there's two defenders, you always want to kick out the inside defender because that ultimately will block both guys. And he did that. I think you know, as he gains more experience, I think he could he could he could be a little more explosive on that block. But he did a great job of running his feet through the contact and and, and finished the block in really good position. Is it difficult to assess the, uh, the the pass rush in the front four because so many uh, three-step drops and quick drops and quick slants? It, it, there's no doubt, and, and I think we get a lot of that here at Rutgers. You know, the people people who've watched our film on defense know we're going to come after you, and, and certainly sacks, quarterback knockdowns, whatever they are, you know, we've accumulated quite a few over the years. And I think when we play people, I think there's a natural tendency for those teams to put a game plan together that gets the ball out fast. You know, they're trying to avoid those situations. So, you know, I think I think our front four did a nice job in that first game, but I don't think there were a lot of opportunities, which is what you're alluding to. Kyle, you mentioned yesterday about talking to Rob about the third down conversions. What kind of things did you guys talk about? Well, you know, without giving too much away. Sure. Yeah. No, I think I think there's some 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 little things, some technique things we could be a little bit better at, and I think some of them were just a function of. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's hard to prepare when you don't know exactly what you're going to see. And I said that all last week. There were going to be some unique challenges about that game in the game planning, and they have a good, they have a really fine coaching staff down there at Tulane. They and they did a good job with it. Kyle, your all-around performance on special teams, Dorner's punting, Deering, um, the block extra point, DePaula kicking. Is that kind of what you want to see week in and week out? Just that all-around effort. We absolutely feel that special teams is going to help us win the game each week. And there's certainly you pointed to all the plays. There's there's a number of them in the game. You know, I, I could also point to two tackles by T.J. Johnson on kickoff coverage that that are big plays in the game. Probably 25 to to 35, 40 yard field position swings if he doesn't make those tackles. You know, so you know we we want to win games on special teams here. I, I think our players buy into that, and I think there's a lot of examples in that first game we can build on. Coach, considering Sybil's play you mentioned earlier and all the other holes created for the running game and also not allowing a sack to a team that outsacked its opponents, how do you feel about your offensive line game one? Yeah, I think it's a good start. Yeah, I think it's a good start. I, I want to see the body of work. You know, I try not to make too many decisions based on just one game or one series. You know, I think they have a performance that they can build on as a unit, and I think that's a positive. Um, any guys you're looking to get in against Howard, especially maybe some younger guys it, to take a look at if you want to, you know, possibly redshirt this year? You know, we, we we have in our minds and in our staff room, you know, the list of guys that we feel, okay, we feel like these guys, will all things go the way we want them to, will redshirt this year. But because you, you can never predict injuries and things like that, it, it's hard to, to say publicly, nor do we want to do that. Um, in terms of playing them this week, you know, our focus is on playing well from the first play. You know, I'm not looking past any of that. I don't look beyond that in any way, shape, or form. And if, if an opportunity presents itself in the game, we'll deal with it at that point. But, you know, I want to say it was last year, you know, we played a game against an, uh, an FCS opponent, and it was 6 nothing at halftime. So, again, you need to approach these games to win the game first. If you look beyond that, you're putting yourself in a very dangerous situation. Kyle, what's your take on playing FCS opponents? I mean, do you like it or? I do. I, th I think it's good for football. You know, I think you know they, they've made the rule such that you can play one a year and it counts toward your bowl eligibility. So there's no negative to your football team to doing it. Generally, it gives you a seventh home game. You know, it didn't for us this year, which I think is a positive for your fan base. You know, you get the, the one more one more Saturday experience for the fan base in your area. And I think it gives the FCS opponent a, a great opportunity, you know, to showcase their program. Coach, you've talked about not wanting to make too many judgments after just one game on anything. 
in the past few years has been some tinkering on the offensive line as you try and straighten things out. How important for you is it to try and keep a group together as much to get some continuity there? I think it's I think it's critical. I, and I don't say that as any absolute, and I don't say that in, to tell you it couldn't work another way, but it's just been my experience over 19 years that the better offensive lines I've coached, seen, been a part of, have all had continuity to a certain degree. And it's not, you know, it doesn't have to be five, but there's got to be a certain degree of continuity week in, week out. There, there is a chemistry that builds with those guys as they, as they gain experience playing next to each other. And can you talk a little bit about Patim Bujari, a little bit? Hey, I think Patim went out there and had a solid first game. You know, it was good to, to get him out there. And you know, again, we had played him a lot in, in practice at center. But until you go out there and do it in a game, you know, it, it's, it's still practice. So I, I thought he handled himself very well. Kyle Saban had a little bit of a fumbling issue last year. He dropped one here. You said Harrison recovered. Is that something you're concerned about or we'll talk to him about? Yeah, we're always concerned about ball security. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's not really something that we talk to him about. We just try to reinforce the coaching points of securing the ball every play. And it was great to see him on the very next play have a positive play. So, you know, it certainly wasn't something that was on his mind. And, and I thought overall Savon did a good job in the game. Unfortunately for him, he had two runs that got called back for penalties that weren't even at the point of attack. You know, he probably lost somewhere between 15 and 20 yards on his, on his stats, unfortunately for him. Or it looks on paper like he had an even better day, but we were pleased with his performance overall. But the ball security is, is always, uh, always at a premium. And, and as we tell the players, the ball is the program. You can't score without it. Coach, you've obviously been on the sidelines for a while. Uh, was there any different uh, feel being the head coach as opposed to being an assistant? Yeah, no doubt. I got to talk to the officials. <laughs> we were never allowed to talk to the officials as assistants here. So that was, uh, that was different. And certainly not going back to the bench is different. You, know, you go from one phase to another to another. You go from offense to special teams to defense to special teams back to offense. And, you know, so the flow of the game, you know, the experience I have on the sideline with the flow of the game is, is a little bit different. Kyle, what's the difference between Antoine Lowry this year and last year? I think another year of building his reactions as an offensive lineman. You know, the offensive line is a stimulus reaction position. You could make a case that they all are in football, but there's so little time for recovery because the people you're interacting with on the other team are so close to you. You know, I think it's just another year of experience playing the position. And I think Antoine has done a good job of he's probably in the best shape he's been in since he's been here as well. And that certainly does not hurt. Any other questions? When you went back again, looked at Gary, anything changed in your assessment? I didn't really know. Yeah, I was pleased with the way Gary managed the game. You know, I think we all, myself, the coaches, and Gary alike would, would like to have that one throw back on fourth down. But yeah, as I said in training camp, he will learn from that experience. I have no doubt about that. And, and he'll be better for it this week. Fortunately for us, we we're able to learn from that experience and win the game. It's always, a, it's always nicer to, to teach and correct you know, after a win, for sure. Thank you. Thanks, guys.